welcome to the garage. <laughs> That's what we're calling this building, the garage. I want to welcome you into the space. Um, the best thing, the very first thing that we pretty much bought in this space was the tables so that we could sit around and talk to each other and learn about each other. I remember clearly at the beginning, it was just the programs and what they were trying to do and how they were working hard in the community uh, really pressed me and really um, made me want to walk alongside of them and do what I knew that they were boots on the ground and they knew what to do and, and so it was just partnering with them and providing a space for, for what they felt would work well. And then I started meeting the outreach workers from Kermodi and from the um, Gitladak, Nishka, from Kassan. Um, then I started meeting the outreach workers. Um, and with that, I've been becoming more aware of the history of our country and the history of the area here. So I saw the one on the sweat lodge and I was interested in that and I went and it was about a three hour, two, three hour teaching of a sweat lodge about each part of it, the, even right from the, you know, the wood or the um, trees that support it and the fire and you know the line and just the rocks and everything and we were invited to participate in the sweat lodge at the end at first i didn't think that i would go because i thought that i would um i don't know i just felt shy about going and i felt maybe too vulnerable it was always the freedom if i didn't want to participate in something and i could always there was a way of going out if you wanted to but I didn't. The whole thing was very spiritual and very emotional and um, very connecting. And when I left, I felt that I was sad that that was all taken away because I felt that, you know, as a society, as a country, if we had embraced that with what others knew already, it would have strengthened, it, it would have like accentuated everything and instead of um, you know pulling that all the way and saying that was bad and what that did to people. Two months ago I lost a sister and I think like I don't know how I grew up I, I feel like you know they passed away and you remember them but what I learned from reading from hearing from others talking that about the ancestors, there's always often that people talk about their ancestors and, and that they're still with them and they're still guiding them and they're still uh, sort of speaking into their life and, and like that's been so, that's probably one of the most beautiful things I've learned because I feel like now I'm, my brother's with me and my sister's with me and they're cheering me on and yeah, I just, it's almost like you, you know, you keep, you keep living with them instead of it just being cut off and gone. And that's been one of the most, probably one of the most beautiful things I've learned. I guess as a, as a community or as a nation, um, I, I, or I, from what I've learned, I wish that, um, Together, we could sort of um, dig deeper into why things are the way they are. Like, if I, you know, when I have people that come to the garage and they are experience, experiencing addictions or, or homelessness or other uh, very uh, struggles, hard struggles, uh, it comes from something. Just like in my life, things have come from something. And the, but when you are part of a, a, a people group, of indigenous people, and you've, you've been, you know, experienced stuff and um, basically told, you know, uh, 
who you were, like way back, um, who you were wasn't good. And then, and then to step out of that, like that's a, that's a, that's a long road. My name is Michael Christopher Bolton. Um, I am Niska from House of Bucknay in Greenville. Uh, so my mom is Niska. Um, and my dad is Simshan from Kitsum Kilmere. Um, but I, I grew up in, in the foster care program from about grade one on. And uh, I, I used to be fluent in Niska. Um, my mom had us fluent in it as, as young toddlers. But ever since being forced into foster care, I'd never used it again. Uh, when I was about 19 years old, I, uh, I felt very unwanted very unneeded. It was after my birthday when no one at all wished me a happy birthday and I was just felt like I was a ghost um, in a way. So I, I decided to hitchhike across Canada and I didn't tell anyone <laughs> and I made it to St. John Newfoundland and back. When I got back to BC I realized there was a missing persons report out on me. <laughs> Um, the police knocked on the door of where I was staying and <laughs> told me that I was missing. Um, <laughs> and then my family really was really wondering what had happened to me. But I was gone like six months um, and it, it really showed me that I didn't know who I was. Yeah, I could say that I was in a scout and from BC, but that's all I knew about my heritage. So after that, I, I sort of uh, made it a mission to learn my history. So I, I joined the Free to DC School of Northwest Coast Art. Because traditionally, our stories were told through the potlatch system and through stories around the fire pit. I see parallels of my story in so many others, um, even people who had gone through residential schools, like they were taken away and never, they were harmed for speaking their language. It's, it's, you never know the path someone has walked, you know, and, and it's just nice to have a helping hand along the way, for sure, was, yeah. It, it makes a huge difference because there's so many people closing those doors when they see you, you know, and, and they lock it and don't want to engage, you know. And my friend who had been detoxing, he was super weak and very low place and he'd never really smoked any drugs before, but he was in such a weak mental state that he, he gave in and it killed him. Um, and it was little moments where I could have helped if I'd just spoken up and said one or two words. Um, um, and if I just said this one thing to them or helped them with this one thing that maybe they would be here. Um, and it's really opened me up to, to really find those moments to speak up. Because you never know if it's just an I love you as you're saying goodbye. Um, those little things help when when you're super weak like and it could come from a total stranger and it still feels so impactful the the garage here is has really been a very loving place um, and just the energy here 
is so healing, even if it's for an hour a week. It, it's, it benefits a lot of people. Through meeting these people, um, I just want to do more for them. Um, and, and even if it's just being happy and joking, like, like just making someone's day can save their life, you know? <laughs>